Tonight I'm in the book of Isaiah. If you would turn with me, please. Isaiah chapter 43. That's Isaiah chapter 43. And we're going to be just looking at two verses of scripture. When you have found it, shout it. Amen. 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 Verse 18. Remember you not the former things. Neither consider the things of all. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. I want to speak in context of this text first. And then I want to shift a little to our present situations. In context, God speaking through his prophet Isaiah was referencing the times that he with a strong hand brought Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. We all know our Bibles, we know the times when Israel for 330 years were in bondage in Egypt and God by a mighty hand he brought them out after several performing several miracles to move the hand of Pharaoh whose heart was hardened bringing them out of Egypt they came to this place where there was the mountain on one side and mountain on the other side there in the valley, Pharaoh's army behind, and before them, the Red Sea. An impossible situation. And what did God do? He made that which was impossible, possible. This is the God that we serve. He parted the Red Sea. He allowed his people, Israel, to walk through. And if we know our Bibles, we would see that they walked through on dry land. Water had now parted. The sea had now parted. No sun was there. But they walked through on dry land. The God that we serve. They came to the river Mara. They were thirsty. Their water ran out. They all ran to drink. But it was bitter. God said to Moses, take a branch, drop it in the water. That branch was no ordinary branch. It represented the branch from the root of Jesse. It represented Jesus Christ himself. He took that branch, he threw it in the water, and the water got sweet. When they were hungry, he brought manna from heaven, food dropping from heaven, continuously, six days a week, non-stop. When they wanted meat, he brought the quails over the camp. And just as the quails got there, they, they just fell unconscious. <laughs> just for them to be able to pick them up, and they got meat. We're talking about God. He gave them victory after victory over the enemy forces. And these and other great deliverances are the former things. The former things that God was speaking about when he said to Israel, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Why will God not want them to remember those things? Why in heaven's name God will not want them to remember those things? 
You see, they were now in Babylon. And their present distress was such that they were crying out to him. They were weeping and wailing. And as we read in Isaiah, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. They were out of their mind because they believed that God will not do anything more for them. And here it is through the prophet Isaiah. He says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of all. Those were powerful, supernatural things that God had done for them. In their present distress, Babylon, he did not want them to think that he had done all that he could have done for them in bringing them out of Egypt. That he was now limited and this Babylonian experience would have been an impossible situation to get them out. But as we heard on Sunday, God always has a plan. Always God has a plan. He did not want them to think that he had done all that he could have done for them. And that there was nothing more. And I want us to say, I want to say to us tonight, this is the kind of thing that the enemy plays on our minds when we go through present situations. He would like us to believe that in spite of what God has done in the past, there is nothing he can do in the present distress. I have been a victim of that in my early Christian life. I had been through situations. God had brought me through. But then the big one came. The major one came. And all how I looked, I could not see how God could bring me out of this situation. There was no way. It all played on my mind. This one was too big. There was no way that God could do anything to change this present situation. This was my feeling. It was very, very real. I was tormented with the fact that I had to live through this situation and it would be always that way. Remember, it was my early Christian life. So these are the kind of thoughts that he will plant in our minds so as to cause us to lose faith. To cause us to be discouraged and become apprehensive, fearful about the outcome of a present circumstance. But tonight I want us to remember that we serve a great, great God. Are you with me tonight? We serve a great, great God. And it doesn't matter what the enemy tries to put into your mind. There is no need for you to even consider. But I know the human nature. I know how the enemy works. And I know at times he can put thoughts in our minds that could cause us to doubt even God. Doubt that even God can change a situation. We serve a God with whom there is nothing that is impossible. We serve a great, great God. One who can do, as the word of God says, exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. This is the God that we serve. And as a people of God, we must believe in this God. We must believe that this God can do for us more than we can even think. No matter what the situation may be, no matter how it may seem to us, we serve a big, big God, the one who created the entire universe. The one, as we read from 
Genesis right through Revelation, we would see the things that he has done for people. And I want us to know that he is the same God. There is no other God. He is the same one yesterday, today, and forever. So don't let the enemy, as he did with me yesterday, make you think that what he has done for you in the past was all that he could have done. That the situation that you are now in was, is too big for him. There is no such thing as anything that is too big for God. He is a big, big God. If we have experienced great things in the past, know tonight that he can do even greater things. And there is not one single person here that can say truthfully that God has never done great things in my life. As long as you are born of the Spirit of God, there is no greater thing that can ever happen to you. And if you are not born of the Spirit of God, the very breath that you breathe testifies of the greatness and the goodness of our God. There are times that the Lord wants us to remember things of the past. He doesn't want us to always forget. Yes, we read in the text, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. We read that. And that was God speaking to Israel. But there are times when the Lord wants us to remember things of the past. And it is good for us to do so. Don't ever forget what God has done for you in the past. Why? Because what he has done in the past can help build faith and trust in God in the present distresses. So recalling the goodness of God towards us in, the past, in past times is important if we are going to trust him to do so. Do for us what he has done in the past. In Matthew 6, we read an account of Jesus and the disciples. Jesus had just, done, just performed miracles. He had just fed a multitude, over 5,000 people, besides 5,000 men, beside women and children. He just fed this multitude with five little loaves that a little boy had, and two little fishes. And when everyone had eaten, they collected 10 baskets full remaining out of those five loaves and two fishes. It was miraculous. And another time there were 7,000. And the disciples were the ones that ushered around the bread and the fish. They were there. They saw with their own eyes. And here Jesus is getting on a boat with them to go over on the other side. And Jesus being the man that he was, always wanted to teach, he started to tell them, beware. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Immediately, as he says, leaven, the disciples say, oh, shocks. We forget to take bread. <laughs> and they started being concerned with one, how we gonna make out? And Jesus perceiving their thoughts, he says to them, wait now, why is it you don't understand? <laughs> why is it you do not understand? What are you talking about? You didn't take bread. Do you not remember the five loaves and the two fishes? Do you not remember the seven loaves and the two 
and how many baskets full? Why is not? Why is it you can't remember? You see, this is what problems can do for us. It can cause us. I've said this so many times before. It's becoming monotonous now. We tend to only look at the present situation and don't look at the past situations that he brought us through. If only we can take our eyes for a moment and reflect on what God has done in the past, we would know that because he's the same God yesterday and today and forever, he can do the same things for us. But the enemy likes to keep our minds on the present situation. Somebody did something, that's present. Somebody says something, you're worried about it, that's present. But what about, this is the same God who brought you out of your Egypt. The same God who saved you when you did nothing to be saved. Will he not do for you now what he has done in the past? So Jesus asked them the question, how is it that you do not remember? So unlike what we read in our text, remember not the former things, nor the things of the old. Jesus is saying we must remember. And there is no contradiction there. Because there are times when God will want you to remember, and there are times when he will not want you to remember. Always remember the good things that he has done. But don't remember the thing that you have been going through last year and bring it into this year. And this is what the message is all about. Here in our text, he is saying to us tonight, remember you not the former things, neither the things of the old. And unlike the context in which God has spoken to Israel, and for the purpose of the message for us tonight, the former things and the things of old are the negative situations and the circumstances which we faced last year coming over into the new year. Now, if you are here and you never had a problem last year, then there was nothing to bring over into this year. But I am sure, beyond any reason of doubt, that one or two of us have had things from last year that we still have this year. Those things we had last year are the former things, the things of old. And even if it wasn't last year and it was last week, it's still former. It's still former. It has passed. And God is saying to us tonight, remember not. Do not remember those things. Those distresses that we had last year. Don't remember them. Don't worry about them now. You couldn't change them last year when you worry. You can't change them now that you're worrying. Just do not remember. Now, let's be real. Let's be real. How many of us could just not remember? Unless we have got a hard drive like a computer that could be erased, then we are going to remember. But we must understand when God says, remember not. He's not saying that you can be brainwashed and get it out of your brain. He's saying, do not recall. Do not recall. Do not recall. And we could do that. We may not be able to forget it completely, but we could not recall them. Why? Well, God says the same thing about himself. He says the same thing about himself. 
God says, I will remember, I think it's the book of Hebrews, I will remember your sins and your iniquities no more. Did he not say that? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 17. Their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. God cannot forget. He's omniscient. He knows all things and there is nothing that could come out of his mind. But when he says, I will remember your sin no more, he chooses not to recall them. The Bible says he places them in the bottom of the sea and he puts a sign, no fishing. <laughs> he does not recall. If you have done something hideous as a child of God, and you go before God and you ask God for forgiveness, the enemy has a way of playing on our minds, making us think that we still have to go every day or every other day or whenever the devil reminds us of what we to ask God forgiveness. No, he says, I will remember your sin no more. I choose not to bring it. And this is what God is saying to us tonight. We can choose to do the same thing that God chose to do. Not to recall yesterday's problem. Okay. So recall it. What good does that do? What good that does? Absolutely nothing. So unlike in the instance where Jesus expected his disciples and his and by us, by extension, to remember what he has done in the past. Here God is saying to us, remember not the former things or consider the things of the old. Don't dwell on the negatives of yesterday. Don't dwell on the things that someone did to you yesterday. Don't dwell on the thing that happened to you yesterday. Don't dwell on the thing that you are worried about yesterday. Don't dwell on that. God does not want us to dwell on those things. This is what he's saying to us tonight. Remember not the former things. What somebody did to you, what they didn't do to you. No, don't recall those things to your mind. The devil is going to have you just at that point and no more. And God doesn't just tell us things for no reason at all. He tells us why. Not to remember. Not to dwell on the negatives of yesterday. He's saying. Behold. Look. Look. I will do. A new thing. I will do a new thing. Next year. It shall spring forth. Is that in your Bible? No. It's not in my Bible. No, now, now it shall spring forth. You shall know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. So God is saying, as he said to Israel, you're looking back at those things that I did, they were great things, but I could do greater things for you now. And he's saying to us, we're looking back on the negative situations that we brought over from last year or last week, whenever it is, it's still former. Don't look at those things. I am doing a new thing now. And you will know it. You will know it when I do it. Now, if we know God, 
if we really know God, we will know that what he says he will do now, he has already done. Yeah. It's done. And you will know it. It's done. That's why he's saying, remember not the other things. A new thing has already been done. I have done it. But, 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 but we are, well, stop looking. He says, it will spring forth. It will spring forth. Could we just trust him with that? Is God a liar? Will he say something he doesn't mean? Listen, I didn't pull this out of my heart. The Lord gave me this text and showed me some things that's happening to his people. Happening to me because this speaks to me also. All of last two, three months in 2018, I have been banging my head against a wall about certain things. You want to know my business, right? <laughs> banging my head. And when I got this text, guess what? No bang head anymore. Because I know that God has already settled the thing uh, that I bang my head about. Where is it? I, I, I don't know. But he says it's going to spring forth. <laughs> is that the text? He says it's going to spring forth. We're going to see it. I'm going to see it. I don't know about you. I take God at his word. I don't have to see to believe. I believe and then I see. You know they're saying seeing is believing and touching is the naked truth. Well let me tell you believing in Jesus Christ is the naked truth. Behold, look, I will do a new thing. Not next year. Now it shall spring forth. You shall know it. This is his word for us tonight. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. Now wilderness is an inhospitable region. It speaks of barrenness. Nothing could grow there. It speaks of harshness. It speaks of hardness. And when God says he will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts, what in effect he is saying is exactly what we sang about a while ago. He will make a way where there is no way. And this is what the enemy doesn't want us to believe. That in your present distress, you look around. It's a somebody that's involved. It's a something that is involved. It's an incident that is involved. You, you look at the whole situation. And you can't see any way out. God is saying to, you, to us tonight, to me and to you. I will make rivers in the deserts. Who ever heard about a river in the desert? Desert is arid, dry. Nothing could grow there. But God says, God says he will make rivers in the desert. I know he doesn't literally mean rivers in the deserts. Not that he can't do that. But what he means is that even if there is no way for your situation, he, God, because he is God, the one who called light out of darkness, the one who created the universe with but a word, he is saying to you tonight, in your present distress, no matter how it may seem to you, I will make a way where there is no way. 
And if you can embrace that, if you can appropriate that word as a word coming from God to you, as I did to me, I know that it's going to be all right. I know. I know. I know that I know that I know that it's going to be all right. May not be all right tomorrow, but I don't have to worry about tomorrow. He said that don't wor worry about tomorrow. You don't know what a day it will bring forth. Our tomorrow is God yesterday. You didn't get that. Our tomorrow is God's yesterday. So if we are looking for him to do something in the future, he has already done it. And this is why Jesus says, take no thought for the morrow. You don't know what a day it will bring forth. Rather than take thought of the morrow, he says, Behold the birds in the air. They don't work. They don't work. But they don't go hungry. Consider the lilies of the valley. They don't work. But Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed as one of these. God wants us as his people no matter what the situation may be. I know that human nature is one to worry. But God has given us his nature. And his nature can override if we allow it. God never tells us to do something or not to do something that he doesn't empower us to do or not to do. He has done a new thing concerning that situation that you're so apprehensive about. You're worried about it. You're a bit fearful about it. You're discouraged. Know that it has been done already. God has already done the thing. Now, all you have to do now is to commit it into his hands and trust him. Trust him. Have you ever had a situation before and you wondered how you were going to get out of it? And today you are out of it? How many of you have had so many situations and you wondered. Listen to me tonight. Worry is a bondage. It is evil. It tugs at your mind. Morning, noon, and night. The first thing you wake up in the morning, how how to handle this? The last thing, God, what's happening? And all the while, Jesus is saying, don't worry about tomorrow. The message tonight is, I'm doing a new thing. Now, not next year. Now, I'm doing a new thing. It's done. We just have to come into that time and realize the thing. Remember not. Don't recall. Don't recall. Don't recall what that person did to you. Don't recall what that person said to you. Don't recall what happened to you. Yes. Don't recall it. I am doing a new thing says the Lord. 
And if we understand God, that our tomorrow is God's yesterday, because he's not, he's not a product of time. He walks up and down the corridors of time. He doesn't have to leave 2018 to come into 2019, you know. He's from eternity to eternity. He's a timeless God. I know our minds can't perceive this, but it doesn't change the fact that he's a timeless God. He's not the product of time. He created the time for us, not for him. It is for us. But he's timeless. This is why he says, before you call, I will answer. Because even before you call, he knows that you are going to call. You're looking at me strange. Do you know that Jesus Christ, as the Lamb of God, was slain for your sin before there was even an earth? That's what the Word of God says. The Lamb of God slain before the foundations of the earth. God had a solution long before we had the problem. And he did something about it before. It's the same thing with everything where God is concerned. He is God and he does not change. So trust him. Don't worry about it. Don't carry it on tomorrow. Just trust him. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. I make rivers in your deserts. <laughs> I make rivers to flow in your desert. Precious God and Father, let's stand. Wonderful Savior and God. Oh, how the enemy cramps our style. How the enemy beats upon us. Causing us to be fearful, causing us to be apprehensive about tomorrow's things that you have already handled. How he doesn't want us to know the things that, is, that are being spoken of by your spirit through your word here tonight. Because he wants to keep us, Lord, in that rigid position, stressed and tensed because of yesterday's problems. I pray, wonderful Savior and God, that we will not receive this word as coming from a man. It is the word of God, the very word of God. You said it to Israel, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Behold, I'll do a new thing now it shall spring forth I will make rivers in the deserts I will make a way in the wilderness I pray wonderful Savior and God that we your people could embrace it I have embraced your word and I thank you, Lord, that it's done. I no longer have to take thought of it. It's done, Lord. But I pray that your, your people, Lord, will embrace it as I have embraced it and trust you, not leaning to our own understanding, just acknowledging you in all our ways. And you promise you will direct our path. Hallelujah. Let's sing this chorus.
if you have a former thing or a thing of old that's still troubling you and you can appropriate this word tonight you can believe what God is saying by his spirit and through his word I want you to come to the altar we will commit that thing to God and we will be praying that that worry that fear that apprehension that discouragement because that's what those things do with us we'll be praying for you along these lines let's sing the chorus
if you're here with